Uh, hello everyone, thank you for coming. I'm Aicha Ferrazzi and I will talk about the left patch. Uh, <coughs> I'm uh, the current uh, Gentucana project leader. Uh, I'm part of Gentucana Security. I'm part of the Gentucana Foundation board member. And I'm These, uh, this year, I did the Google Summer of Code Administrator for Gen2, and I helped mentoring a Rust project <coughs> for Gen2. And I'm also working in Japan for CyberTrust in Japan. So, uh, <coughs> I will give a brief in introduction about a live patch. Uh, the slides are many, but I will try to be really short. And I will explain a bit about the what I think are the current live patch service that is around today. And I will give uh, motivation about a live patch and explain a live patch. <coughs> so uh, well, this project started at as a Google Summer of Code 2017 uh, for the Gen2 organization. <coughs> and uh, if uh, uh, someone doesn't know what is Google Summer of Code, is a uh, really good project organized by Google. So, uh, <coughs> Life patch uh, is uh, what is life patch? Life patch is a system for uh, modify the modify the kernel uh, without the need to reboot. And because uh, um, the downtime is expensive, for example, supercomputer or container, and also for uh, patching security vulner vulnerabilities. Uh, in uh, less time <coughs> is uh, used in many systems uh, <coughs> for example in embedded or uh, <coughs> in uh, supercomputer or also in mobile <coughs> so uh, <coughs> I will explain mainly just about uh, K patch, K graft, and uh, live patch, that is the main system that LF patch is using. But there is also many other uh, systems that for doing live patch. <coughs> so uh, K graft is made by SUSE, and is a uh, live patch system that is using per trading uh, lazy task. Um, function r r switching and <coughs> there is a K patch that is using a stop machine for routing to a new function. So <coughs> it is uh, adding the F trace and stop the using stop machine <coughs> and changing to a new function. And live patch is. Uh, uh, the upstream version of the live patch system and is a hybrid of uh, K graft and uh, K patch <coughs> and is using the uh, per task consistency and uh, syscall variance switching <coughs> um, and combined with the <coughs> uh, K patch stack trace switching. So uh, K patch build, that is what LF patch is using, can work with K patch and live patch. Um, and in the end, live patch is just a module, but uh, <coughs> one of the problem of this module is that it takes uh, many time for compile. And <coughs> well, at Gen2, we, we like to compile everything. And, but there is some like case where, like some, 
Um, well, we like to compile everything, but in, in some cases, we, we don't like to keep the computer compiling too much. <coughs> and also, uh, <coughs> like usually we try to keep the house warm in winter during compilation, but there is some solution in Gen 2 for uh, not using our PC for compiling, and that is using binary host, that is having a server that is compiling for you, and can give you binary package, and or using a pre-compiled binary, so we have some package that have already pre-compiled. <coughs> and so we tried to do same things for live patch module. <coughs> so the current existing live patch service there is many, but uh, <clears throat> they had some problem that we thought was some problem that uh, you have to trust the third party vendor. Uh, they are lacking support uh, for <clears throat> custom kernel configuration. So if you are using a different configuration from what your vendor is giving, you cannot use in the live patch services that is providing. And <clears throat> also if uh, you want to make your own uh, live patch patch, <clears throat> you cannot use the service for compiling the live patch for your kernel. <clears throat> and in some cases, they are closed source. So <clears throat> such solution, you have a developer that is making the live, live patch patch and <clears throat> is sending to uh, server that it will distribute the, patch, the live patch object to <coughs> the various machine that need the live patch object. <coughs> so our solution is uh, to support a different kernel configuration and <coughs> to support also a patch sended by the client and we release the system as open source. <coughs> So the LF patch client is sending uh, the version of the kernel, the configuration that is using the kernel, and is sending a list of patch uh, that will be converted to live patch object. <coughs> and is sending the main patch and a list of patch that will be the, because we, it will increment the patch over the old patch that your uh, kernel already have. The implementation is uh, Python, is <coughs> actually mm, is just using Python. And <coughs> there is uh, many challenge. And so <coughs> one of the challenges is that uh, some patch uh, require manual modification. Uh, for be converted to live patch, and <clears throat> in some case, uh, <clears throat> reproducing the build environment, uh, it becomes complicated. Like <clears throat> when there is difference in uh, compilation uh, version or compilation flag, <clears throat> it became the live patch became incompatible, or there is some architecture that are uh, <clears throat> incompatible with live patch. Uh, in some cases, also, uh, <clears throat> like Gen2 have uh, non vanilla GCC, that is GCC with some patch added by Gen2, and in some cases, uh, we see that it can break live patch. <clears throat> So uh, the current status is uh, <coughs> we released the fourth beta version uh, in 2007. We <coughs> packaged LF patch for Gen2. And <coughs> on Gen2, we have uh, the lastest version of kpatch. We presented as poster as uh, a research conference 
and we try to keep a close collaboration with uh, KPatch maintainer. <coughs> and this is the situation of uh, KPatch package on various distribution. <coughs> so, <coughs> LF patch uh, still uh, have <clears throat> it still need many many change and <clears throat> many uh, new feature what we are thinking <clears throat> and now the first things that LF patch need is having a better life patch automatization and <clears throat> and this is because uh, we try to make uh, more simple for the user to make uh, life patch objects. <clears throat> and as now in some cases, the user still have to modify the life patch, uh, patch for <clears throat> making it compatible with the life patch system. And <clears throat> now we try to make a multi distribution and life patch staining and a continuous integration and continuous. Uh, development check <clears throat> and LF patch overlay. Well, so uh, about LF patch automatization, <clears throat> uh, well, one of the things that came out from uh, the live patch mailing list is to try to <clears throat> uh, mainly think about uh, when there is no semantic change. <clears throat> and to make a tool for creating vector relocation entries for uh, doing the life patch automatization. And <clears throat> we are trying to make it disponible uh, for different uh, operating system. And <clears throat> we, uh, made uh, <clears throat> we tried to make a left patch client for Debian, but uh, <clears throat> it's actually a bit of a monster because uh, he's using actually Gen2 kernel over Debian. <laughs> and <clears throat> I can. So uh, we are trying to patch uh, meme info, <clears throat> and I think it's too little to see. Yeah, I don't know actually. <clears throat> Uh, well, this is the case with Gen2, and <coughs> the LF patch client is sending uh, the patch and the kernel configuration and <coughs> to the LF patch server. The LF patch server will uh, build the live patch and return the live patch object. And 
and, and here I don't know if we can see, but uh, there is uh, some part that is becoming caps look and it could patch <coughs> the main info. So uh, another thing is uh, live path signing, signaging, and <coughs> is implementing live path module signaging in the server and doing the live path verification on the client for be sure that uh, the live path is sended by <coughs> for safety reason. And <coughs> another way of using live path is uh, uh, to testing that. Uh, the live patch system is uh, working, so you can have a testing server that will test the LF patch. Uh, they will test the live patch sent by LF, LF patch, <coughs> and before sending it to production, so you can know if the live patch is working or not. And now we are working also in a Travis implementation for doing a continuous uh, integration uh, testing with LF patch. And <clears throat> another thing is doing uh, LF patch overlay uh, that is uh, similar to Gen2 overlay. Uh, <clears throat> that is a repository for keeping the uh, live patch uh, Patch for be sent into <coughs> the LF patch, <coughs> and And the current version is uh, like this, like you, you can add the uh, <coughs> patch, uh, the kernel version, and the patch ID, and <coughs> it will send the patch to the, uh, and then you can subscribe from the LF patch client to the LF patch overlay, and it will build such patch for the LF patch client. The um, <coughs> conclusion is that uh, live patch usually takes time compiling, and there is uh, some vendor solution that are trying to solve uh, the compilation problem. In a proprietary way, and LF patch is offering a flexible solution. And <coughs> LF patch client is on GitHub, and <coughs> if uh, it is still uh, mm, it is still in beta version, so if you find any issue, if you have any problem, to please send to the LF patch client to uh, the GitHub repository, <coughs> and. A few days ago, uh, we opened the first uh, LF patch server node. And <coughs> if you have Gen2 and you want to try, <coughs> you can send, uh, <coughs> you can live patch your kernel from this node. 
Uh, if you are interested in contributing, uh, Eric Pachi is welcoming every sort of contribution. And this is everything. <clears throat> if there is any question or anything. Hi, Alice. Um, maybe I missed it in the presentation, but uh, for KPatch, um, we have a requirement that uh, the same version of GCC is used. The one that built the kernel yes. needs to be the one that yes. builds the, the KPatch module. Yes. Um, I, I didn't see anywhere in the, the message that you were sending, you, know, you send along, I think, a patch and a kernel configuration, yes. and the server then goes off and builds the K patch. Um, was there something that specified GCC version, or is that something that you know you no, would be? No, uh, at the time there isn't, and uh, we see. I, I think with major version you can break a life patch, but if you have like minor revision, you can, you can have still some compatibility. Right. Yeah. We can. I know we can get away. You can skip the the GCC version. Check. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, sure. If you have big version difference, you will have problem. But if you have few difference, you can still be safe in some case. Just a suggestion as maybe a future enhancement the, for the, yes. the server. Um, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so this is not, not, not a question, just, just a remark, maybe more for public, because it usually doesn't take one hour to build a live page kernel module. So I, okay. I suppose you were talking about k page build. Is that correct? Hmm? Uh, so I, I suppose you were talking about a K page build that that yes. one takes one hour to build because yes. to compile a kernel module is just like a second or two. So okay. is is that correct? Yes. Uh, yes. As now I'm still using K patch build, and <clears throat> if uh, it, it depends, like. Uh, Usually, when you give the so sure you you can use I think a different version of doing live patch. Uh, so um, now, uh, our no, I, I, I think you answered. So huh? I, I think you answered. So it's it is yeah, about yeah, yeah. capability, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I actually had a question, and this is just my own ignorance, but could you speak to why kpatch build takes an hour to build a patch module? That seems surprising. <laughs> I, I should probably introduce myself. I'm, I'm Joe uh, Lawrence, and I, I do work on the kpatch project, so I guess that's my fault, or yeah. part of our <laughs> fault <laughs> for that. Um, so. What kpatch is kpatch build is doing is that we uh, we do an elf uh, binary comparison of the kernel and modules that are built uh, pre patch with um, you know the same the same build uh, post patch um, and that means that we have to essentially build two kernels um, and that's even true for distro kernels like rel. Um, because we need to ap apply um, some GCC options. We, we build um, with um, functions in their own sections, so then the comparison tool can figure out by ELF sections what has changed. Um, so w what uh, I kind of thought of um, after you know, his question is that uh, another potential um, feature that you could add is that um, Kpatch build does have an option where you can specify um, 
what you want to build. Do you want, uh, you can build the whole, you know, just do a make and build the kernel and all the modules, or you can elect to say, build VM Linux. So if you know that your patch is only in the kernel proper, you don't need to build all these kernel modules. Vice versa, if you know that you're patching uh, a kernel module, no need to build the kernel, right? Uh, or all, all the other modules. Um, so um, initially I imagine you could probably add to your message format to specify mm. what the target uh, is that you need to build. Um, and if you get really fancy, maybe you can derive that from the patch and the configuration itself. Yeah. Other questions? All right, there aren't okay. any other questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.